So the terms electromagnetic radiation at first may sound very complicated and hard to understand until you realize that it's just a fancy way of saying light, right? Light that differs in wavelength and frequency. Uh, so in this video, we'll talk about some of the properties of light as well as the Planck's equation. All right, so electromagnetic radiation, as I mentioned before, EMR, is also known as light, always has a constant velocity. Technically, this is only true in a vacuum, but it's always going to be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which really is the speed limit of the universe. There's nothing that can go faster than that, and that's the speed of light. Uh, EMR varies in both frequency and wavelength, and it turns out that these two things are inversely proportional, meaning that as wavelength increases, frequency decreases, and as wavelength decreases, frequency increases. So the equation, this very fundamental equation of EMR, is that C is equal to lambda nu where lambda represents wavelength, and nu, this is not a v, by the way, this is a Greek letter nu, represents frequency. The electromagnetic spectrum shows you all the different types of EMR, and these EMR vary in their wavelengths and frequencies. So on the very left, we have short wavelength, and short wavelength corresponds, so low wavelength corresponds to high frequency, and energy is directly proportional to frequency, so high energy. In contrast, on the right side, we have a longer wavelength, which, cor which is a larger wavelength, corresponds to lower frequency. And because frequency is directly proportional to energy, lower energy. All right? So you should actually be familiar with this spectrum. Uh, the very highest energy rays are gamma rays, things that can really harm you. X-rays can also harm you, ultraviolet. So the, 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 the stuff that can cause biological and physiological harm tend to have high energy, and so they have high frequency and short wavelength. The stuff that's less harmful, like radio waves, microwaves, and infrared waves, have long wavelengths, short frequencies, and low energy, so they can't really harm you. Invisible light's in the middle. So an easy way to remember this a little mnemonic advice, uh, a, a mnemonic device that I use to help remember this is that um, my grandma's, so G for uh, grandma, grandma's X-rated underpants are visible in my room. Okay, so my grandma's X-rated underpants are visible in my room. Really silly, kind of creepy mnemonic device. Honestly, the creepier, the easier it is to remember. That way you know your electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and, it, and you should know this uh, for your class. Okay, so let's talk about Planck's equation. Basically what Planck said is that the energy of a given type of electromagnetic radiation is directly proportional to frequency, as we saw before. Okay, so this is directly proportional to frequency, but inversely proportional to wavelength. So in the top, I'll write frequency, and it's in the bottom, I'll write wavelength. And the equation that he came up with was that E is equal to H, a constant, times nu, frequency. Here we see as frequency increases, energy also increases. And you can actually write this in a different form um, if you know that, based on the first equation, c equals lambda nu. Here, if you solve for frequency, if you solve for nu, you divide both sides by lambda. You get nu equals c over lambda, right? So instead of writing h nu, you can also write h c over lambda. Okay? And you'll often use either of these two forms or sometimes even both of these forms. Now let's define very explicitly what all of these variables are. E represents the energy per photon, and energy is always represented in the units of joules. Uh, H is Planck's constant, which is this value. It'll be given to you on a test. Uh, nu is your frequency. The units are always hertz. Another uh, way to say hertz is cycles per second, so one over a second. Okay, so that's the same thing as hertz. And then wavelength is also is always a measure of distance, so the units are always going to be meters. You should know what all these variables mean, as well as the units. Okay, if they don't give you the right units, like if they give you with a wavelength in nanometers, you have to convert to meters. Okay? You always have to have these standard units. If they give you energy in electron volts, convert to joules. All right, so using this equation, let's go ahead and try a question. All right, so the question says, calculate the wavelength in nanometers of a photon 
that has 3.71 times 10 to the negative unit of 19 joules of energy. Right? So to do that, we're going to use Planck's equation. And we're going to use the form that has a lambda in it, because we're looking for a wavelength. So we're going to use E equals hc over lambda. Since we're looking for lambda, I'm going to solve this equation for lambda. All right? So uh, I'm going to move the h to the other side. I'm going to divide both sides uh, by c, and then take the rest. So let's do it one at a time. So e over h is equal to c over lambda. Right? I can cross multiply. So lambda times e is equal to hc, and then I get lambda is equal to hc over e. Right? And now I can plug in. Right? So now I can plug in. I know that my Planck's constant is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. I know that my uh, speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Again, these are going to be constants that will always be given to you on your test. I divide this by my energy, which is 3.61, it's given, right, times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And then I should get, finally, my wavelength, which is going to be in meters. And notice here that my units do cancel out, right? My joules cancel out with my joules down here. My seconds here cancel with seconds, so I'm left with meters. And when I solve for this, I should get 5.51 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Uh, this can also be written as 551 times 10 to the negative 9th meters. And if you remember, nanometers corresponds to 10 to the negative 9. So instead of writing it in scientific notation, I can just write it much more simply as 551 nanometers. Nanometers, NM. Okay, and so that's how you do uh, these types of problems that involve Planck's equation.